In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When the dean asked me what I was preaching on this morning, and I said the gospel, he chuckled and said, good luck. So <laughs> let's, let's see how I go. Now, hear me out. Joseph Stalin is credited with saying, the death of one person is a tragedy. The death of one million is a statistic. I know it's a little strange to be starting a sermon on John's farewell discourse with a quote from Stalin, but I can't help but feel that it's relevant for the world that we're living in today. I don't know about you, but I found it hard to stop watching the news, especially the American media, watching the death toll rise, people who believe the virus is a hoax and the push to liberate states for economic viability from lockdown while deaths are still occurring by the thousands. I wonder if the quote is right, that because the death is so great, it makes it harder to comprehend, to believe it, to feel compassion and empathy and value human life when it's all so much and so big. Sometimes hard truths are so overwhelming that it makes it easier to dismiss them, lest the fear and grief of reality consumes us. In our gospel today, Jesus says to his disciples that if they love him, they should keep his commandments. His commandment comes just a touch later in the discourse in John at 15, 12, where he says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And again in 15, 17, I am giving these commandments that you may love one another. Jesus goes on to say that the advocate, the spirit of truth, will be sent and that they know the Spirit because the Spirit will live in them. But the world cannot receive the Spirit. It does not know the Spirit. So we see three things in this reading. Love, truth, and advocacy. Now, this is a hard one because what if the truth is too much? What if, in the words of Jack Nicholson in A Few Good Men, where the truth of the violence and discrimination was unpalatable? You want the truth? You can't handle the truth. How can we love people and value human life if we cannot handle looking truth in the face? How can we love and keep people safe when we deny the reality of situations? How can we stand up for human dignity and equality if we are looking the other way because what is happening fills us with overwhelming grief, helplessness, sadness, and sometimes shame? This has come to the surface most keenly in our current pandemic and how different countries are handling it, but this applies much more widely in our approach as humans. You can see it in the way people have responded to climate change, treatment of refugees, domestic violence in our homes, abuse in the church, just to name a few. But let's not pretend that this is a modern day phenomenon. We didn't invent the human condition. Humanity has denied, played games of subterfuge, scapegoated and invented history since the dawn of time. We can see it in the Gospels, where we see the innocent victim go to the cross as a criminal because the truth of Jesus was too much to comprehend and the people baying for his crucifixion had too much to protect. Real love exists in the strength of staring truth in the face, even if we cannot bear it. To be truly loving means acknowledging reality. To be truly loving means that we need to value human life and human dignity above all else, even politics and money, just like Jesus. 
where he showed no greater love than to give of his own life for his friends. Jesus tells the disciples that the Father is sending them the advocate, that the advocate will dwell inside of them. The Greek word for this is paraclete, and it can be translated as advocate, helper, or intercessor. Digging a little deeper, the word means one who appears on behalf of another, an advocate in the sense of representative for the accused, a defense attorney. The Holy Spirit, the defense attorney. The one who stands up for the accused against the prosecution. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want a crummy defense attorney. I want one who will be caring and compassionate who values my life. I want one that would know the facts, that would go out of their way to research and find the truth of the situation, even if it were uncomfortable and hard, to have integrity and perseverance. This is the spirit that dwells within all of us. Real love cannot exist without truth and advocacy. Real love cannot exist without a follow-through action of standing up for what we believe in. We believe in a God who sees us all as equals and desires fullness of life for each and every one of us. And when we see actions that contradict that, we are compelled to call out those actions. This is scary stuff. But whoever said that being a Christian was going to be easy. We have to remember that each and every one of us is a child of God, never a statistic, and that we are all valued. Archbishop Desmond Tutu says, God's dream is that you and I and all of us realize that we are a family, that we are made for togetherness, for goodness, and for compassion. In the world that we are living in today, as Christians, we cannot look the other way when human lives are in danger and human dignity is overlooked, even if the truth that we see is too hard and we would much rather be in a nice, comfortable state of denial. To never let a human life become a statistic, just a number in our hearts. We are called by God to be people of love, truth, and advocacy. These three things are inextricably linked in our journey as Christians. So as we continue to journey through Easter and into Pentecost and through this strange world, I pray for the advocate, the spirit of truth to burn inside us all, hungering for a world where all are safe, fed, and equal. Amen.